Hi guys, um, I'm with uh, Mr. Ramesh Narasimhan, um, President of Nissan Motor Thailand. We're here for the Nissan uh, Leaf Amazing, Simply Amazing Challenge. So, what is it all about? So, uh, we wanted to show how Leaf can be driven in different environments. So, about uh, a month, month and a half ago, we did the Leaf Drive yes, I was in, there, in, in Bangkok, Bangkok. Yeah, which you were part of. Now, we, we have brought Leaf into, in, in, uh, in, in this beautiful surroundings in uh, uh, what's the tallest mountain in Thailand. We're in Chiang Mai right now and we're going to drive up Doi Interno on the highest, Doi Interno. highest peak in the country. Right. And we wanted to show how LEAF can be driven in different environments and how it, it, it is simply amazing whatever the surroundings and the environment is. How do we use the technology of LEAF that's available? One to enjoy the driving experience but also using the technology to extend the range i mean with electric vehicle always the question is what's the range and you know and it just shows how if you use the technology right how it helps you to maximize that as well so you don't give away a driving pleasure at the same time you can reach your destination in quiet and smooth way with me eco-friendly nature eco-friendly that's uh, right all right so we're going to see how, how, how all it right. goes all okay. right thanks a lot thank you a bit lighter, uh, not to my liking, but the uh, precision and, and the feedback is pretty good. We have a lot of corner cornering to do today and I feel very good in the leaf. The balance is good. We have a low center of gravity. There's no engine in front, so all the weight is on the floor from the battery and motor motors is also located very low. Turning is very nice in, in the leaf. Zero to 100, uh, kilometers per hour acceleration is uh, uh, under 8 seconds which uh, puts, it in, puts it in uh, like a sports sedan category with this kind of figure unfortunately the top speed is not something you want to look forward to it's just about 150 to 160 maximum and at that speed your battery is, is going to drain very fast because uh, at very high speeds uh, It'll, oh, okay. We are reaching the uh, entrance to the Doi Internal National Park now. Okay, back to the battery. Uh, with EVs, uh, when they tell you about the range, uh, the LEAF has a range of 300 kilometers, ah, 300, 311 kilometers, but that's uh, not going to happen in the real world because uh, you are going to have to accelerate, decelerate, and uh, go high, high speeds. <laughs> Audio jet free song. Jet free yeah. song. We have a competition today uh, who's gonna Capacity, jet use yeah. the least amount of energy. So these guys are checking figures now. So, so as I said, um, at high speeds the battery will drain very quickly. So, this is the part where EV still has, has something to, to improve on. But in general, yeah. Uh, you'll get close to 300 kilometers if you, you drive this normally, not not too sporty manner. 
the suspension I mean at low speeds it takes up bumps and you know cracks on the road very well but uh, if you happen to run over like a very deep pothole okay you start feeling uh, uncomfortable but still um, the ride is really nice I mean, in the leaf especially with no engine sound and the cabin is very very quiet and you feel very relaxed no, no exhaustion when you're driving this car at all the road is getting steeper now we're going a bit up to the top the top is about 2600 or 700 meters so uh, it's gonna be a nice view on top the the leaf is priced at 1.99 million which is uh, kind of I, I mean the, the general consumer would, would would think that okay it's not a cheap car you know uh, there are cheaper alternatives for for EVs in Thailand but of course the other brand has has a uh, privileges for, for for tax so they they, they can sell it at a much lower price price point but for a major Japanese company Nissan is only one offering an, an EV now and uh, they have they have been doing EVs for a long time actually this is a second general uh, second gen leaf the, the first gen was launched like uh, 10 years ago so they have collected a lot of experience you know yeah. apart from from the product service uh, they are they also uh, have a lot of information about the lifestyle of the user what needs to be done to, to have like a, a complete uh, package of, of EV use Inside the car, I mean, it looks exactly like a normal car. Good spa space, wise or, or equipment wise, it's just a, it's just the same as, as a normal passenger car. One thing I don't like about inside is the display here in the middle is very small. It looks very uh, outdated compared to a modern car like a leaf, like the leaf. I'm sure the in next gen or doing the minor change model, this whole panel is going to become like a big screen over here. But but for this model, yeah, you got to do with this. This looks like uh, audio system from the 80s actually. I like the steering; it's very sporty with a flat bottom. Got the blue stitching. All the controls, everything just like normal. The the gear knob. Very small. This is something that's going to be different. But okay, in in the way you use it, still the same as as a normal automatic transmission. Okay, so now we are at the top of Da Internon. And let's see what we have left. We started with 274 kilometers on a range now, 59 kilometers left, which looks scary, but uh, looks scary considering the the distance we had to drive back to the, our start point. But on the way back, it's totally downhill, so um, we're gonna regenerate back some electricity power. And uh, let's see if we can <laughs> arrive at our final des destination of the day. Okay, so this is uh, Kung Fu Sit from Delta Electronics. Uh, he'll be uh, showing us how to charge a Nissan Leaf with the uh, Delta uh, charging unit. So, can you it? Uh, this is a we so called uh, AC robot charger from Delta. Uh, and then we will try to charge with the uh, Nissan Leaf. So, when we open the charging port here, we have the AC charging and then DC, DC. charging uh -huh. for quick charge. So, this is two sockets. This is, uh, can I open this? Yes. Uh, how how uh, do it? This is uh, for the DC okay, for quick, the charger. quick charge, right? Yes, so quick how long, how, uh, how 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 quick is it? Quick charge. Uh, quick many charge can be charged thirty to forty minutes. Thirty up to forty to minutes. Eighty percent. Uh, why eighty, not hundred percent? Uh, it can be up to hundred percent, but we can start in fast charge, quick charge in zero to eighty percent. Uh -huh. After eighty, becomes to, normal charge. Yes, becomes oh, okay. normal charge. Yes. So 
today we have we have we back from the the internal yes. and then we try to charge with the, our charger. Our charger is uh, come with the power power LED set up here, mm -hmm. and then if it is in standby, then should should have the the socket. This one is the type one. We have the lock and unlock position here. When we plug in the Nissan Leaf with type one socket, and then it will sound beep. It means it's already connected. After they are have communication between the charger and the EV, and then they will accept the charger. Okay, so now I can I cannot start the, the motor. Yeah, after they finish the charging. Only only after the charging. Yes, then and then you can, you can turn resume. on. Veranda Resort, which is our starting point. As you can see, uh, let me show you. We have 18% um, left in our battery and 52 kilometers range left. This is all uh, done by driving downhill with the eco mode. As you can see here, it has an eco mode, and by choosing this driving mode. Do this first, it gets into D, and then do it again. It becomes B mode. B mode maximizes the um, energy uh, regeneration to the uh, fullest level, so uh, it actually increases the range as the further you drive it downhill. So, this is something that's uh, very helpful for uh, people living uh, in the northern region. But of course, you know what? When you go uphill, you'll you use a really, really a lot of uh, energy as well. So, uh, well, there are good points. There are there are also bad points. So, one thing we learned today is that uh, with the EV, there's a lot of things you got to learn. Techn technic uh, driving techniques and how you want how you can calculate your your range so that uh, you don't freak out trying to locate the closest uh, ch uh, charging station so uh, this is done with a 40 kilowatt hour battery which is kind of a standard these days uh, some brands have uh, bigger capacities so some have 45 uh, kilowatt hours such as the uh, MG ZS EV but uh, the leaf really, really gives a uh, nice driving experience overall. Maybe the acceleration is not that, you know, you know powerful, not as powerful as uh, as some other uh, EVs. But um, you don't feel a lack of power or torque. You know, it's just uh, the this car is more about overall packaging not about any one particular topic so uh, at 1.99 million maybe it's a bit pricey considering that uh, there's you know there there's room for improvement in, in in this car for example this this should surely be a, t a big touch screen instead of a small this thing looks like it, it came from it comes from the 90s uh, maybe uh, when Nissan plans to have a minor change uh, version of the Leaf, I'm sure this thing is going to be totally changed. They're going to throw this thing out and put a nice wide touch screen there. But for now, those interested in EVs in, a, in, in the market, there aren't many brands, you know. Apart from the Nissan Leaf, there's MGZS, uh, a couple models from Hyundai and some from, and another from Kia. Otherwise, you have to go to buy uh, gray market imports such, such as uh, Tesla, but that's very expensive, not, not very as affordable as, as, as these cars, which is price two million baht and below. Okay, then, so uh, I think that's all for now, and uh, I'll see you next time uh, at the Mercedes Benz driving event in Buriram next week. Alright, then, until goodbye.